Okay, welcome to part one of Mixcraft 6 for Beginners. It's uh, pretty simple. Um, I wanted to do this in several parts so that I could go from, you know, the the beginning stages to the to the more advanced stuff, uh, video by video. I think it'll help a lot of the people out there that are just beginning. So let's open up Mixcraft. Well, I've already got it open. Let's just maximize it here. Each one of these are tracks here. They could be for audio files that you've added to your project, or they could be for live instruments, depending on what kind of project you're working on. You can also rename these tracks. Let's say this one will be vocal. You could name this one guitar. That way you could keep them separated, maybe drums. You could name this one, you know, bass, percussion, so on and so forth. Um... Save your project about every few minutes or as soon as you think about it, just in case you run out of system memory, which can happen. Um, these are really cool. This is cool when you're trying to edit an audio clip. Zoom in and zoom out. Um, this is your new project icon. This is open folder or you know load project. This is say uh, add sound. This is save. Uh, Burn audio. This is if you want to burn a project that you're working on down to a disc, and then mix down to audio file. You'll you'll be given a few options to mix down to MP3. Uh, I think you can even mix down to WAV file. Um, but that's all you really need to know to get started with Mixcraft. Let's just add a an audio file that comes with Mixcraft. Let's see. Let's go to drums here. Let's just add a drum sound. I'm going to reduce my let's just work with that sure let's change it to 90 let's zoom in just a little bit now this is 70s funk drum fill 12 the tempo was 90 one bar that means this is one full bar at 90 beats per minute Okay, you can hit this and double that. So now it's two bars, three bars, and four bars. Okay, now let's see. Let's find something else at 90 beats per minute just to see if we can't... Uh, make a neat little sound here there's 95 this is all going to be faster probably than 90 We might get lucky and find something at 90 beats per minute here. Let's ch let's see here. Okay, let's add that. I'm going to do that in the key of E. Okay. You see how that goes? And let's reduce the sound on the guitar here but I don't want the guitar to start for two bars let's go back two bars on the lead guitar riff the cool thing about this zoom is you can really get your timing just absolutely perfect by zooming in you see that's the end of this bar see those little arrows I want to make sure my guitar riff starts on time okay so let's try this now this is only this right here is only lasting for one bar, so I want to make sure that lasts for two bars until the beginning of the lead guitar. There's the end of that second bar, beginning of the lead guitar riff. Now watch. Okay. Now, I'm thinking maybe I want my muted guitar sound to continue because if you notice at the beginning of, of this before 
it went just straight back to drums as soon as the muted guitar stuff stopped. Let's continue that for one more, for two more bars. Okay. Let's also extend our drums for two more bars. And try to cover the entire riff. There we go. I also want to fade out my mute, my muted guitar. So to fade something out, select that. See this little adjuster? Let's tweak that all the way down. There we go. Now let's listen to it. That's basically how you build a sound file, you know, build a project. You want to make sure that your tempos are the same. You can also tweak your tempos. Go to Sound, Adjust Project Tempo. The problem with this, though, is it doesn't exactly always make it sound right. So you really need to have a good ear for, for what sounds right. Some instruments will not sound right when you tweak the tempo. Be very careful with tweaking the tempo any, on, any, on any vocal file. Uh, any vocal track, any vocal project. Uh, let's open a, a project that I've been working on. Let's see where did I put it. Here we go. This is a pretty cool project I've been working on, and I did this to show you guys how you can make different sounds. This is a dubstep project. I want you to listen to this. Okay, that's just some dubstep sounds, okay, some, uh, some effects right here on this top track, okay. Uh, I added some, some drum sounds here, some drum sounds here, some drum sounds here, and some drum sounds here, and on the very bottom track, I doubled it up here. You see here, this is one bar, but the dubstep sound faded away toward the end, so at a half bar, I added another one uh, to fill the gap. Let's say I want to only have one sound appear on, let's say, the left side of the speakers. All I do is slide that panner to the left or to the right, okay? You can do that for any track. You can do it for every track. Um, to add a sound, just right-click, go down to, sel uh, to select Add a Sound. Pick, pick the sound that you'd like to add. It's pretty simple. Um... Let's see here. Effect. Let's say we wanted to add an effect to to that sound. We go to effects here. And we'd see what, what do we want to add? Let's say we add some reverb to that just that one little sound clip. Now listen to it. You take it off and you'll notice it doesn't have nearly as much reverb. It's still got a lot of reverb in it. But you can add, take, uh, take away, you can dry it up, you can make it really wet, compress it, you can add the flanger, distortion, delay. Um, this is something I use a lot, the Pultronic 2 EQ. Um, you can play with that. Uh, effects are really uh, sensitive. I suggest any project you're working on with the headphones, definitely always plug into a real stereo system. That way you can hear how this is going to sound when you burn it down to a CD or upload it on a video or whatever your project is for. A lot of times it'll sound awesome on your headphones, but when you try to play it in a real system environment, 
it sounds terrible because your effects really they sort of overpower all of your drier sounds, all of your sounds that don't have effects, your your raw drum set, your raw guitar. Anytime you add effects to, let's say, your vocals or maybe your lead guitar, or maybe you've got some some turntable effects in there, something like that, a lot of times your effects will completely overpower the rest of the uh, project. So be sure you always monitor everything on a real system stereo environment. That way you can tweak your effects. I really uh, suggest... Uh, tweaking all of your effects um, before you save your project every single time. Um, make sure that you've got uh, good system memory when you're when you're editing your project. You don't want to work for an hour and lose all your work because your your uh, your computer decided to crash on you. So be careful about that. That's really all that I wanted to add on this very first video. The second video we're going to get into recording on the fly tweaking your vocals, um, saving a project, adjusting tempos maybe, um, whatever else I can squeeze into that second video without just overloading your brain with a bunch of stuff that you just really maybe won't use yet, or maybe you're not interested in using that. You're, I, I think that uh, learning this just a little bit at a time is what's going to really make it stick because Mixcraft... Uh, six is it's really a super custom version of Mixcraft five. They're a lot alike. Um, so if you know how to use Mixcraft five, you're not going to have any trouble with Mixcraft six. But if you're still interested in learning a few more steps uh, and a few more tricks, then um, be sure to look for part two. Thank you for watching.